it's happening. I, I'm totally unprepared. I had every intention of eating my breakfast before I got started. And then I had intentions of doing other things. I'm still pulling the chat out here. And then I got a phone call and I just got off the phone and I thought, ah, oh, crumbs, I'm running late, so I better go on. And here I am. And it's all happening, I hope. If not, I'm talking to myself, which isn't a bad thing because sometimes it's the only intelligent conversation you get. But let's just see. That's up, that's up. Get up there. There you go. G'day, Cape Six. How are you? Oh, dear, oh, dear. There we go. I'm going to scoff me breakfast. G'day, Ray. I'm just going to get this into me. Wait a minute. Because Robert will be down in a tick and I'll have to share it with him. I, I said I just got a phone call. So I took that and I looked up at my clock and went, Oh, I'm 10 minutes late. Don't think the missus has come down on me and I can't scream anymore. She did. She did come down, but it's all good. I'm allowed to stream, but she's limited to, limited to, 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 to me till 12 o'clock. So there you go. I'll, I'll keep that going for a bit, and I might sneak it up and get a little bit more, whatever you may call it, um, push the time frame a little bit. I'm just making sure that's in the middle. Yeah, that's in the middle, that's in the middle, but I'm not in the middle there, so what's going on? I should be. Whoop, that's the middle there, so that means I've got to move. Now, this is really complicated because I point that way, and yet I see myself pointing that way. Let me just shove the camera over a bit. That might, might have something to do with it, if I can do it without bra breaking the glass that's sitting there. Ah. Oh. Dear, oh dear. Now that's there. That's there. I'm definitely not in centre there, so it's got to go back the other way. All right, we'll go that way and see what happens. Oh. Wouldn't it be nice if you walked in? That's looking a lot better. Oh, look at that. I'm, I'm happy now because I'm almost in the middle for diddle. That will do me. All right. I'll throw a bit more of this down my neck. Oh, I would have thought according to 10, yeah, no, I'd have my breakfast. It's all right. No. Going to reupholster Bob's bed for him too. It sounds flat, but it's not. Having a rethink about that cabinet as well. When I've got nothing better to do at night, I sit and think. Mm. I'll put that down there for the mutt. And now we can get into it. Don't need my keyboard because everything's all good. Mm. All right, let's go. Kate Six, hi, how are you? Ray, good day. Jared, good morning. Trevor, no, nice to still you see. <laughs> nice to see you're still with us, mate. I love those cartoons you're putting up. They're awesome. That, <clears throat> that, did you put the fishing one up? I know someone did. <laughs> it reminds me of a true story. True story when I went fishing once. G'day, Devon. G'day, Clint. G'day, Lucas. Hi, Eric. How are you? Poor man. The poor man is Eric, in case you're wondering. I'm on time tonight. Hello. No, I'm running late. <laughs> How's that? G'day, Chad. G'day, Max. Oh, dear. Jacob, good morning. Eric is going on 8 p.m. for me. Steve is eating breakfast. Got to love time. Well, it's 10 o'clock here. I should be having I should be having smoko now. Louise, good morning. Good morning to everyone. George, good day. How are you? 10 o'clock at night. Oh, well, there you go. Tempest Brewer, 
my boyfriend and I started watching the other and now we both love way. Well, thank you, heart energy out to you, me dear. I oh, appreciate that. Oh, Trevor, yeah. <laughs> That's an answer to your question still there. Good morning, Ian. Oh, right. I don't know what to do first. I think I'll do Bob's bed first because then when he comes in, he can have a feed and he can sit down on it. Because he's a big lump of a lad and he keeps stretching his mattresses. Let me put all this stuff away down here. Oh, dear. Um, oh, I'll leave that out because I've got to finish doing those. So this can go over there. And this goes with that and that goes with this and this goes with that. And Suzanne, apparently Suzanne's aren't there anymore. They were a dress shop, but they're no longer. Ah, I was going to tidy up. Emphasise was. Um, I want to make a template for this. Playing around with the doors. Mm. Um, oh, wipe me mo. Put this away. Okay. Let's get Bob's bed. Oh, dear. I can go there. Where's his whoop? It's not a flash bed. It's just a frame with a... With a... Um, I don't know what they call these. Sugar bags, are they? Chaff bags or something or other. But they don't, they come in different sizes by different colours. He's a purple, which is an extra large. I think the green is a large, and then there might be a blue one or a red one. Oh, so here we go. This is, oh, this is Bob's illustrious bed <laughs> without, without mattresses. And you can see normally that's taut, but because he's a fat fella, he stretched it. So what I'm going to do is actually leave that one on there. And I'll put a new one on. Oh. oh dum -dum -dum. Try not to knock that shellac over. Not sure what time Susie's going to be here today because she's got to go to the doctors to get stitches out of her back after she um, had that horrible thing removed. That'll do. All right. This, this is making dog beds 101. Dirty old looking bag. I think I've had that in the, oh, it was. It was in the, it was in the smithy. So now. Knife, a pair of scissors might even do. Scissors could do. Oh. Cut a little hole in the corner. Like that, and a little hole on this corner. like that. Boom, ba -dum, boom. Oh, Bob won't know himself tonight. He'd, he'd be having nice puppy dog dreams. Okay. So that's got a hole cut in it, one on the other side. Now we just thread. I'm going to leave um, the one that's on there already. I generally Get them up to three. Just gives a little bit more cushioning for the young fella. And don't forget, he's got two foam mattresses that sit on top of this. He used to have one, but he flattened that, so we went and put another one on there. Oh, he's going to think someone loves him. There we go. That goes on there like that. And this is meant to go on there like that. There we go. Just hello, Bob. Look.
look, I'm making your bed, mate. I don't care. I just want food. There he is. There we go. And we just got to feed this on. What? I'm deep in thought here. You can, you can tell this is, this is fine upholstery work. There we go. Now, if I can, I want to stretch that over the one that's already on there, but she seems to be a bit tight, so I don't know. We might not be able to do it. Ah, there we go. There we go. That's Bob letting me know he's finished. <coughs> oh, oh, tell you what I did. I found, I don't know where I got it from or who wrote it. I don't, I don't know, I might have wrote it or somebody else wrote it. I have no idea. But I'll show it to you in a little bit. I think it's quite amusing, the dangers of woodworking. Uh, here we go. It might have been Danny from the old Twitch days. I'm just going to put this up here. So I can try and pull this up. We'll go there, see. Not missing much. Bum bum dum bum bum. should come through there, which it does. We can do it with the other one. We're quids in. I'll, I'll move this because I'm really concerned I'm going to knock it over. Better appreciate this. That's all I can say. Nearly there. As soon as we get there, we'll be. What is it? <laughs> we'll, we'll be better. We'll come good when we get better. Um, all right. So I'm going to try and heave all that up now. Oh. What has this got to do with woodwork, you might say? Absolutely nothing. But it's a job that needed to be done, and I thought, well, if I do it while I'm streaming, it'll get done. And it is getting done. Oh, God, there we go. That is tight. There we go. Go, 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 go. Ah. That one's through, that one's through. Oh, look at that. And look, champion now. <clears throat> he's not going to know himself. He's going to come running in and jump on his bed and 
instead of sinking and going splat like he normally does, he's going to bounce off straight into the ceiling fan and there'll be sliced bits of bob floating everywhere. Oh, this will do it for another six months, I reckon. Okay. There we go. And we just got to join those together. And he's got a new bed. <coughs> I'll show you what I use. I don't know what they're called. Now, they used to be called Mass Bros, not Ass Bros. Mass Bros. Let me just have a chin wag. Oh, dear. Morning, Wombat. <clears throat> oh, there you go, boy. Oh, Max. Good stuff. Oh, I hope Terry's moving some catalogs because they really are good. Burlap. Yeah, that's what it is. That sort of thing. But there's a, sorry, there's some sort of uh, bag, for chaff bag or something. I don't know. Good morning, Julian. Ray, oh, you're being treated to something different this morning. <laughs> no, I'm not putting slats in there. It's, it's comfy. It really is. I don't like sleeping on slats. I like to have a mattress. But anyway, these things, uh, I know them as mass pros, but... They, you use them on, they're like paper clips, they just hang together in a great big blob. There you go, well, that's them there. And you've got these special pliers. Let me just crank this down. I did have a beautiful, nice pair, but um, this is what I'm stuck with now, these cheap ones. But... They've got grooves on the inside and they sit inside that groove and then when you squeeze them, they just curl over like that. I think the main use is for uh, chicken wire fencing, putting chicken wire up on your strainer strands. But doesn't matter. For me, they're for Bob's bed. So you just thread it through the material like that or have it either side of the material like that and then you just squeeze them like that and hold it together great idea and that's one job that's been <laughs> needing to be done for a while. So, Bob thanks you. Going to be interesting. I'll put it down. I won't take it up to the house yet. I'll put it down here. He might even come and test drive it. And then to get these off, I just use a pair of snips, either tin snips or um, diagonal cutters or whatever you got at hand. Well, that, in that case, you don't even need that. You just cut it all off with a knife and then throw it all away. In one big go. So there you go. Bob has a new bed. I'll put it over here and we'll see. If he comes in and plonks on it or not. There we go. Nice and tight. Taut. 
I don't know. Well, he, he's, he's funny today. He didn't um, didn't come in for his bicky this morning. Just laid on his bed. He might be just tired or like all of us, feeling the strain of it all. Oh, so anyway, that's that. I'll tidy this up and then I'll show you this post. I reckon it's absolutely great. I just don't know who gave it to me. Oh. Oh, you make me mouth water, Trevor, every morning. Oh, no, Susie wouldn't wear that because he, he sleeps in the house in the hallway. Cat, short for catalogue. Eric, if you want an H&T Gordon catalogue, and he's the chap that makes all a lot of my planes that I've got here, the planes behind me there and all these moulding planes and specialty planes. Terry Gordon, H&T Gordon, if you want a catalogue, I haven't got one around here, normally I do. Um, go onto his website and say you like a catalogue and what he's got for any viewers of Woodworking Masterclass YouTube channel is you answer a question. You've got to tell him that you are watching me, answer the question correctly and you go on a draw for a $300 gift voucher. Um of one of his tools. Excuse me, I've just got to put my spongy thing on. Um, so yeah, I mean, if you were cheeky, I suppose you could win it and sell it for 200 bucks cash. I didn't say that, but uh, yeah, the question you have to answer is what sort of timber does Terry use for the majority of his planes. Or another way of putting it is, what sort of timber does Terry use to make his Gigi planes? Gigi happens to be a tree which happens to supply wood that he happens to use. So, what sort of timber does Terry make his Gigi planes out of? There you go. If you answer that, you go into the drawer. Oh, you can find him, um, I've, I've forgotten his email address, but someone will put it up, I'm sure. But if you just go to h htgordon.com.au, hit the email button and it will come up. Uh, let me see. <clears throat> oh, no, George, no, no, if I was in the doghouse, I wouldn't be allowed to have a new... <laughs> a new cover, it would be the end of me. What's his max? But Trevor being spoiled again, I think he's always been spoiled. <laughs> I like your response, Trevor. Oh, also, big shout out to Murray. Thank you so much for your email, mate. You hang in there. I hope your uh, wound heals up and you can get back and enjoy your workshop because it looks like a stunning workshop. So thank you. And thank you for having me in there. I appreciate it. Now get back to work. It, it's funny. I, what are we doing? This is 26 days, I think. The emails that I get, literally, some bring me to tears. I have no idea what is going on out there. All I am is one little bloke in a shed, in his backyard, having some fun, getting some jobs done to get his missus off his back. <laughs> Not really. And yet some of the emails and messages I get from you people out there that are watching, thank you so much. I mean that from the heart. And God bless you. Um, we'll get through it. We will. It's one of those things. Uh, there's some positives coming out of it. I don't know if you saw something on Facebook and it was, it was lovely. It, uh, I don't know where it was, I'm not sure what country, <clears throat> but it had the earth needs time to breathe and it had a photograph of this, it wasn't the Arc de Triumph, but it was that type of structure. I, I think it was in, it might have been Turkey or, I don't know, but anyway, it had a picture six months ago of this particular structure and it was, you couldn't see it. 
It was covered in smog and um, muck and dirt and there was traffic everywhere. And Then someone has taken a photograph a couple of days ago and the sky's blue, the air's clear, there's not a car in sight and it's almost as if the world's going, the, the earth itself is going, oh, that's nice. But anyway, not getting on to that. Um, here you go, this, this I saw, I'll just read a bit more and then I'll share this, I think it's great. Uh, yeah, that's always, that is always the go, isn't it, Julian? Yep. If things don't add up, wait for the clanger to fall. <laughs> don't ask, don't ask silly questions, Max. That should be a rhetorical one. Your domestic deafness. Oh, dear. There are. Thanks for that, Max. Appreciate that. That's Terry Gordon's uh, email address, planemaker at hntgordon.com.au. Okay, I found this image today and I thought I've got to share it with you. I couldn't figure out how to put it up, so I've jimmied away. So here it is and I'll read it out because it's too big to fit in the screen. So whoever wrote it, I, I have a suspicion it might have been Danny from the Twitch days. And Danny, if you're out there, I just hope you're in good health, son. I'd love to have you back in the show. But here it is. And obviously it's having a shot at the um, Say No to Drugs campaign that was popular at the time. Just say no. Who's that hefty blade there? Jeez, I had a bit of lard on then. I believe, I believe that's Mr. W. Mark, if you're watching, ring me up, say good day. <clears throat> so here we go. Recreational word working may seem like a bit of harmless fun, but it's not. You'll start off small thinking you can walk away at any time. At, and anyway, it's harmless and only costs a few dollars. A cheap number four plane, a set of bargain chisels, a saw from a yard sale. What harm is there in making a few shavings? Others do it. Why shouldn't I? Without realising it, sawdust is now in your veins and you're hooked. Before you know it, you'll be needing your daily fix of shavings. You'll be scouring the, auction, scour, scouring the auction sites for the next hand tool. You'll be drawling at the very mention of names like H&T Gordon, Lee Nelson and Veritas. Your dreams will be filled with visions of moving philisters. Your nightmares will be full of tear out and visions of being chased by a router. Yeah, I'm thinking that's Danny. Woodwork will ruin your life. Your bank account will be empty. You'll find yourself standing on street corners desperately trying to score your next plane. You'll sell your kidney for yet another Veritas plane. But you are already down one kidney from when you sold the other to buy a Lee Nelson number eight. You're constantly making old man noises and your hands will be a mass of scars. You'll be inviting dealers into your home and your friends only will be their fellow... Hang on. And your friends, and only your friends will be fellow dusters. You will end your days broken down sawduster. Just say no. Brought to you by MAFAW, Mothers and Fathers Against Woodworking. So there you go. I, I think that's brilliant. I'm sure it was Danny. I, I'm sure it was. Oh, dear. Oh. <laughs> you never know, Julian. It might be. It might be. G'day, Dennis. Did I say g'day, Dennis? Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. Yeah, it is true, isn't it? But but the upside is it's fun. All right. Um, tell you what I will do. I'm going to shellac the bottom of these boxes I finished sanding yesterday. And I'm just thinking I might move this bed over there because there's a cable running underneath it and I don't know if that's how we'll go and jump on it and that could be the end of the stream. So these have been sanded on the base so we'll get some shellac out and a brush. Where's my brush? 
hush for a brush. Oh, come on. I had it not five minutes ago. Did I hang it up on the floor? No, I left it on my bench. There you go. Oh. <laughs> it's practice, Tempest. It's practice. You've got to develop it. Okay, so all I'm doing here, you look at that pop. You can't because you, you haven't got the camera on it, have you? Oh. Num, ba -da -da -da. Whoops. If I didn't have a bin there, I'd end up throwing stuff on the floor. There you go. Okay, just look how this pops. Doesn't that come up nice? So all I'm doing here, I'm using this as a sanding sealer. It's not a finished coat or anything like that. It's just going to be a sealer. And I'm actually finishing these with an acrylic. For a couple of reasons. One is time. And the other is I get a really nice finish with the process that I use anyway. So... There you go. And I'm going to do around here as well. In fact, I might do the whole box. Boom, ba -dum, boom. What's going with this? There we go. Ba -da -ba -bum. Boom, ba -da -bum. I finally, I think I finally worked out the ratio for the shellac because this, this is quite nice. It's not gumming up. I say that because normally shellac flakes, uh, all you've got to do is just cover the shellac flakes, but this stuff that I've got, I've actually minced it up and it's almost in a powder form. And I was having all sorts of bother a week or so ago. But seems okay now. The brush I'm using is a Taclon, synthetic one, but it's great because it doesn't leave any brush marks. And they're a lot cheaper than badger hair or squirrel hair brushes. So that one will just pop that one there. <coughs> Eric, we'll be back in about 20 minutes. Have to see the, whoa. You guys see the little one and be back. Oh, yeah, if Mike comes on, apparently he asked me a question that I didn't answer. <laughs> and I don't know if there is an answer to it. I don't know. I've been racking my brains. I'll have a look around the workshop. <whistles> boom, boom, boom. That uh, timber underneath there, that's Chilean myrtle. And the stuff on the outside is Queensland walnut, which isn't a true walnut, but it has a walnut type of colour. Definitely, absolutely, definitely does not have a walnut smell, but does have a colour. Oh, it's marvellous. Sometimes I can hold these things and they're good, and other times 
they're a bit ornery. And this one seems to be a bit ornery. There we go. Got it now. Bum, ba -da -bum, bum. Hey, where's the Royal Highness? Is she slid in yet? Haven't seen her. I'll get back. I'll catch up in a minute. I'll just finish this box. Then I'll say some more good days. There we go. Nearly dry. Ha, ah, um. <laughs> yeah, I, he who dies with the most tools wins. I, um, I love that one. <laughs> the guy saying, my biggest fear is my wife will sell my tools for what I told her I paid for them. <laughs> That's when you get some bargains. Oh, there you go. No, the winner in the one who gets the left tools, left to enjoy. Hey, what about, you know, the Studley cabinet? <clears throat> Those of you who don't know should check it out online, Studley cabinet. He was a piano tuner. And his cabinet is absolutely superb. There's actually a number one plane in there. You'll look hard, but you'll find it. And uh, he, there was two, now can't forget, they were either nephews, they weren't his sons, I don't think. I think they might have been his nephews. And he left his tool cabinet to one of them and uh, uh, it was a car, I don't know, a Buick or, or something or other. He left to the other one. And the one that got the tool cabinet was really, really miffed because he couldn't see the sense in the tool ca cabinet and his brother got a, a car. So his brother said, oh, well, that's the way you feel. I'll swap you the car. And they did a swap. Hey, guess who's laughing now? I do believe it's in the Smithsonian Institute. I don't know if they actually acquired it or it's there on perpetual loan. Um, and there's been a few people that have tried to imitate it, but no one's come close. And if I've got a book... Um, uh, oh, who is it? Jim Toplin? Top, Toplin? Jim Toplin, I think? Or Tim? I don't know. I'll have a look in a minute. Um, he wrote a book on toolboxes. And I believe it is in that book. If not, it's another one that I've got. And they've got a picture of the outside of... Studley's toolbox, and it's a dog. It really is. But apparently, that's what used to be the go. You used to do your fine work and craftsmanship on the inside of your toolbox, and that was your calling card. If you went somewhere to do a job, you could open your toolbox up and you could show examples of inlay work, marquetry, carving, French polishing, um, joints and that was yeah that was sort of your calling card or your portfolio but you had the outside looking as scungy as you possibly could because when you were traveling on stagecoach or train or bus or whatever you traveled on if it looked horrible no one was going to knock it off so I thought what a great idea I always think I was just born 100 years too soon. No, it's too late, not too soon. Oh, I don't think I'd like to be here in 100 years. I don't know what's going on. I remember I was, um, we had, had some friends. We used to go over and play cards with on a weekly basis. And uh, he used to be a fighter pilot. And then became an airline pilot. And we were talking there one day and 
he, he we were talking about um, our previous lives and what have you. And he said, do you believe it? And I said, look, just because you don't understand something doesn't mean to say you've got to write it off. So, look, I think anything has um, potential. You, you don't know. These people say categorically this doesn't exist or that doesn't exist. Um, no, you, just because you don't know something doesn't mean to say it doesn't exist. So anyway, he said, yeah, he said, I, I have a really strong feeling that I was a knight at some stage, you know, in, in armour and I fought wars. And he said, and then because I'm a fighter pilot, it sort of comes through that that might have been what my genre was or my previous existence. I said, yeah, no, I get feelings like that. He said, and he got all excited. He said, oh, yeah, he said, well, what do you see yourself as? You know, what, what do you imagine you were in a previous life? I said, oh, I don't know, maybe a journeyman or something. He said, well, what's a journeyman? I said, oh, a bloke that goes around the countryside with a roll of tools, plying his trade. Well, that was the end of the conversation. Apparently, I, I wasn't exciting enough. <laughs> oh, dear. I'd be quite happy to be a journeyman. In fact, the book that I've got half written, I don't know if it's half written or a third written, I don't know, um, is about a journeyman and his adventures. I feel very, I can identify with him. Or perhaps he can identify with me, I don't know. Now, I don't have to do the rest of this box because it's already been, been done. Oh, where are we up to? Started moving tools in the new shed. Oh, wow, good on you, Dennis. Do we get pictures? Want pictures? Bury with me with my tools. Ah, oh, yeah, at least a couple. Just in case, first lesson in woodwork is to grunt and moan when bending over to pick something up. Second lesson is to remember what you bent over to pick up in the first place. I agree with that, Brian. I think that that sums it up very, very well. Oh, you poo-poo. Just splashed it all down the side, which I didn't really want to do. That's all right. That's fixed it. No, I'm not having a swig of this. <laughs> this is pure alcohol. <laughs> Trevor, I'd like to be here to see the fight over mine. It would be worth dying for. <laughs> Doesn't matter, James. Just sit in the middle of the, all, all those tools and you, you'll feel smarter. <laughs> yeah, we'll have a naming contest. What's it for? Hey, Paul, how are you? Sorry, I'm a bit late in catching up, but I'm there. Bada bum, bada bum. Oh, I'm trying to find that jumps again. <clears throat> tools are tools, that's it. Hey, Cindy, how are you? Welcome to the workshop. Thanks for dropping in. <clears throat> oh, it's weird you say, George, you wonder why your credit card disappears. I got one the other day, drain, drone. A drone ad came up on my Facebook page. Lost your credit card? And I thought, this is really weird because this is when I lost all my cards a week or so ago. And I thought, How do they know that? <coughs> Excuse me. And then it came up on my Facebook again today and I thought, ah, in other words, I looked at something and I didn't buy it and they're, they're having a shot at me. 
You just just move stuff out of the house, Dennis. That's all you got to do. Tagador, hola to you, my friend. Thank you for coming back. Hunters and gatherers, scroungers and keepers, I reckon. <coughs> <laughs> Bonus. I like that, Trevor. <laughs> I don't think my wife... No, I don't want it. <laughs> I don't want any more lathes. The link to a vid on Toolbox. Oh, there you go. Oh, no, it didn't come through. I don't know why. What was the name of the box again? Studley. Hang on. I'll see if I can... I'll just see if I can find it, the right spelling. Wait a minute. S T U D L E Y. Studley tool box. It's got an O in it, not an A, you idiot. Um, okay, wait a minute. Where's my flipping mouse gone? Here we go. Okay, I'm going to open this up. What's been called probably the finest example and of a tool chest. That's Norm Abrams having a chat. So what I will do is I'll see if this works. There you go. That's um, that's the link to Norm Abrams going through the Studley. <coughs> it really is a work of art. Uh, where is we here? Um, Silver, good morning. Thanks for coming in and saying hi. I hope you all had a wonderful Easter and a real stay-at-home break. Well, the break is still happening and Easter was pretty good. I know my grandkids fanged out on chocolate and <laughs> it was a good thing. Don't I notice the Tim Tams didn't disappear. Years ago, there was Easter eggs and bars of chocolate in the fridge, and our Tim Tams were left alone. Well, I think Tim Tams are cheaper than Easter eggs, but anyway. Uh, T-Bone, Steve, re yesterday's oak and metal lesson. Does that apply to nickel or brass? Uh, what about using screws in oak? Will it affect the finish? Well, <coughs> excuse me, steel screws will eventually. Brass won't. Uh, brass doesn't react that way because it's the iron or the ferrous metals which is the iron content that reacts with the tannin and brass being, what's brass? Lead, lead, bronze and tin, isn't it? Or something like that. Um, it doesn't. So brass screws, if they're going to be show pieces and the screws are going to be exposed, use brass ones. I don't, oh, look, I, personally, I wouldn't use nickel-plated screws on, a, on an oak cabinet because oak traditionally is an old thing and I think silver screws would look a bit yuck. Even if I'm using ordinary screws, I, and I've got, um, are they, are they nickel-plated or what's the other stuff they put on them? It might be nickel. Uh, zinc-plated. Yeah, I'll take the zinc off and just leave... Uh, mild screws. I think you asked me a question the other day. So I was told, Mike, what was the worst tool I've ever bought? I've looked, I, I racked my head and I really, I cannot think, possibly that electric planer I bought the other day, but that, that was a bargain. That wasn't a bad tool. I'm just looking around <coughs> here and have I got anything here I don't use? I was looking. No, look, honestly, I think I use everything I have ever bought. And it's wonderful even if you don't use it for ages. Now, if you'd asked me a while ago, I would have said a lathe, but now I like the lathe. Um, no, look, I don't think there's anything I've bought that is I don't use. 
And it's really nice to have. You might not use it for ages and all of a sudden, oh, I need so-and-so. <clears throat> I've been given some fairly useless tools, but I'll, I won't tell you about those because that's not fair to the manufacturers. <clears throat> no, no, I think everything that I've bought, I have used. Because the main thing is I only buy things when I know I've got a job for them. So there you go. That answers yesterday's question. And I hope that answered yours, T-Bone. Matisa from Argentina, thank you. Welcome to the workshop and the mayhem and whatever else goes on here. We really, we, we're going global, aren't we? Paul Grillis, well, hello from Brisbane. G'day back to you from Brisbane. Whereabouts in Brisbane? What suburb? Unfortunately, my cousin has the tools. Oh, darn. <laughs> you have a question, Max. Uh, I have a question for you. The shorting board that you made with the removable 45 degree angle section, oh, could that 45 section be a permitted fi permanent fixture as the one I need is... Yeah, look, you can do them. I did have, I think they're outside. I did have 45 degree ones that I used. Um, I made some little ones up for box making. And I made one at 60 degrees and one at 45 degrees so I could get squares and hexagons. So, yeah, uh, just screw it on if you want. What Max is talking about, if I can find my, my shooting board. My donkey's ears there. Where's my shooting board gone? Oh, well, here's one. But I haven't got the... Um, Another bit for it. Wait a minute. Da -da -ba -de -dum. Okay. That's a shooting board I had that I used to use in room for woodwork. So it had a, a different cleat on it because the bench in room for woodwork is very small. So that cleat would then go up against the bench like that so I could then work this way instead of most of them go along the bench like that, like that. But this one, because I had a small bench, went that way. This groove here, I'll see if I can find one kicking around. It takes a, um, a sleeve which gives me a 45 degree angle. I'm just having a butchers out here. What's that one? No, that's not it. No, that might be up in the other shed as well. But there was a wedge. It was a tapered wedge and it slid in there like that. So then I could put my job, it was obviously cut off there, and I could put my job there and I could shoot 45 degree angles. So that's what Max is talking about. Mate, just screw one, screw one on. It doesn't matter. In fact, if you screw one on that shape, where are we? That shape onto your shooting board, then you can shoot that angle and you can shoot that angle on the same board. Uh... Silver, sorry it haven't been up too much, but getting ready to run my still in the next few days. I believe the product I make is great for internal flushing. The battle of... What way to go! That's good. Anything that's good for the body is good for everyone, I reckon. Hey, John! Welcome back. We missed you yesterday, didn't we, people? I even commented at the end of the stream, gee, where's John? I hope he's all right. I hope he's not working too hard. So welcome back. You have some of that energy. It's good for you. Uh. -dum -bum. Sunny Bank Hills. Oh. Mate, I would be um, about 25 minutes away from you. There you go. I'm down at Jimboomba. Um, 
Brass is copper. Oh, that's it, copper. That's what I was thinking. Thanks, T-Bone. Brass is copper and tin. Bronze is copper and tin. Brass is copper and zinc. And it used to, it used to have lead in it. I don't know if it still has lead in it. That's what made it so soft. <clears throat> Armadale. Oh, there you go, Silver. I've got some good friends in Armadale. I, in fact, there you go. I picked up, I don't know how long you've been in Armadale for, but I picked up this number 010, which is a 010 carriage plane, rebate plane. I bought it from Piddington's. They had an auction many, many years ago in the, uh, the funeral parlour down there. And the funeral parlour had, as they did in those days, had a joinery shop next to it, and that's where they used to make the coffins. That's where I bought that from, and also bought a gorgeous crosscut saw, which is up in the other workshop. And I used to work in the Commonwealth Bank with George Piddington, who was the grandson of the guy that owned the uh, funeral parlour. So there you go. Small world. Gee, that was a long time ago. Oh, well, I hope you're recuperating. You can take your mind off the stress for a little bit, John, while you're here. <clears throat> what was that, Matisse? Matisse, say hula. Hula. All right, hula. There you go. That's for Matisse. Is that it? Or Matisa. Matisa. I hope I got that right, so hula to you. Uh, yeah, we, we can't speak Spanish, so you're doing a heck of a lot better than we could. Uh, not some place I could get to quick enough, even the planes are flying. Uh, oh, that's okay, I got that one, George. <coughs> Yeah, no, George, you, John, you just come in here and take your socks off and put your feet up and make yourself at home, mate. No need for anything. Uh, yeah, I'll remember that, T-Bone. Mike, on this. Oh, that must have been that. Are we going? I'm way behind, aren't I? <clears throat> Nothing wrong with that. I always used to say, John, better to let it out through your eyes and have it show up on a, uh, an X-ray years down the track. And I, for, the, for the money, I've done my fair bit of crying in my life too. What is the strange thing on the wall next to this cake spatula? Oh, this. This is an angle finder, a multi-fix. It is. It's brilliant. It honestly is. This is this is one of those tools that you you think, oh, what? I'd never need that for. I'd never need that. And then when I got given it, I understood how to use it, it is brilliant, especially, especially when you're doing restoration work or you're doing, um, in my case, capping around the top of a, a cabinet and old stuff is not 90 degrees. You might think it is and you might have to replace a bit of um, moulding. So you cut it dead square at 90 degrees, at 45 degrees, and it won't fit. But with this, what you do, I don't know. Got, I haven't used it for ages, but we'll see how we go. Hello, Bob, look, look, you've got a new bed. Oh, let's see if he's going to use it. I'm all excited. Look, Bob, bed. Look, bed. Look. Go on, get on your bed. What do you reckon? I just, no, oh, it hasn't got mattresses on it. No, you can get on it. Look, come here. Look, look, yeah. Get on there. Get on there. What do you reckon? Hey, hey, he's not too sure about that. It doesn't sag like it used to. And where's my, where's my mattresses? You can lie down. 
You can? What do you reckon? Oh, he's not too sure about that. It just doesn't sag. Well, anyway, that's one good job for the day. Um, yes, so. Uh, I'll see if I can find something that's not square. We might cut something that's not square. Um, ba -ba -dum. Isn't it marvellous? You should have a, a workshop full of... Yeah, we'll cut this if I can do it without messing it up. Okay. Now, that is a totally... a total arbitrary angle. I have no idea what it is. But... No, you're off camera now, Bob. But if I want to duplicate it, this is what you do. You do that, like that. So you've you've actually there you go. You've duplicated that, and then you tighten this up. Tighten that up there. I've got to remember how to do this now. And then, how did it come off? Okay. Oh, that's right, yeah. This, somehow or other, comes off like that. And then you go over to the saw and you put that on your saw blade or that on your saw blade like that and then adjust your fence or your, your, your mitre box angle to whatever that is and then it'll cut that angle until the cows come home. So if you're doing that on a um, piece of moulding that doesn't quite fit, you just go up to it Click that together, get that angle, take that off, go over to the saw, and then you can dock at that angle there. And it will give you the exact angle you need to marry up. It's um, made by Nobex. It's a multi-fix. And I love a lot of um, their, their products. They do some really nice things. That put together... Um, well, that, that string thing I use for putting polygons together, that's made by Nobex. Now I've got to work out how this goes back on. Oh, dear. Okay. That goes there. And that goes around to there. Is that it? Oh, there you go. Okay, so that's it. So that's what it's used for, an angle finder or to match angles that you're not sure exactly what angle they are. Oh. And it saves you, you know, chopping and guessing and chopping and guessing. Oh dear, oh dear. Um. <laughs> no, I, I use a broom occasionally. <clears throat> oh, good. I hope the little one's good, Eric. John, you're more than welcome. What, demonst demonstrate the bed or demonstrate that angle finding thing? Mm -hmm. uh, no, it's, oh, I don't know, it could be. No, but anyway, that's what it's for, so I've done that. Yeah, it, it takes a bit for me. Get the old brain work and get my head around that. 
G'day Stephen. Oh, good on ya. Oh, you and Trevor, good company. Yeah, got my Jarlsberg cheese and tomato on crackers. Flat white cold was settled in. Oh, all right, hang on, I've got one more of these to do that I haven't done because I distracted myself. I did. Anyway, I don't know if I said it or not, but I'm having a rethink on that wall cabinet. Because I've got to tell you, it has a lot of weight in it. I'm toying with the idea of, I might even convert it into a bookcase or a secretaire or a secretary, depending how much you want to play, pay, um, and use that just as a top cabinet, maybe a little bureau, don't know. I, I spoke to the, the boss today about it and she said, oh, that'd be nice. A little trick I learned from a mate of mine, which I, I'm pretty sure I've shared it before, is if you're making furniture for yourself and it's going to hang on the wall, put French cleats on it. Because when you go and sell your house... Most of the time when you sell your house, it comes with fixtures and fittings. Now, if someone comes to have a look at your house and you've got a really nice wall cabinet hanging on the wall or something or other, and they go, oh, that's nice, that's a fitting, I'll have that. Um, and then you go and take it off, well, you're in breach of contract. Unless you specify at the time this doesn't come with that and that doesn't come with that, uh, which most people don't because they're all excited they're going to sell their house. So if you have it on a French cleat, the cleat is the fixture, not the cabinet. So when you go, you can take the cabinet with you and there's nothing they can do about it because it's not a fixture. The cleat is a fixture. Pretty clever. I remember when um, my mum and dad sold a house they had at a place called Corlett, which is in New South Wales. Dad had a snooker table downstairs and he'd made some lights up, which I actually have them here still. And when he left, it was part of the, the snooker setup, so he took the lights and, yeah, they wanted reduction of $20,000 because the lights were included as a fixture and um, it was going to cost them. They had to get a, a plaster in to completely redo the ceiling. Please, there was three or four screw holes in the ceiling. If you couldn't fix that with $5 worth of spackle, there'd be something wrong with Oh, no, no, and they made this huge, big thing about it. And, you know, as Dad was saying, well, no, it's part of the snooker table. It's, you know, it's not a fixture, but anyway. So I'll just go and move these over out of the way. Oh, look. He reckons it's Christmas. He's asleep. He's off dreaming of sausages. Don't you, bud? Hey? Yeah. Oh, a bit of a tail wag there. <clears throat> Sometimes look at him and wonder, how much longer are you going to be around for, old son? But I can tell you this much, he's had a good life. Haven't ya? Must be nice to sleep on a bed like that instead of, you know, something hard. Just sort of nice and saggy underneath you. Now it's all nice and firm. Before he'd jump on it and it'd almost disappear into the insides of it. Be wrapped up like a wrapped up like a hot dog he was. All right, now, we'll get on and do a bit of staining because it's got marching orders. This is going to be stained, so we can stain it. Oh, where are we up to? I know I'm catching up. Oh, I love Jarlsberg cheese. Oh,
do, 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 do. Never had the patience to do a Rubik's Tube. I used to pull them apart. I think there's a, um, a site on Google, and it's step-by-step step how to do it. I, I could memorise how to do it, but I had to print it out. And, yeah, it's, I, I still don't understand the mathematics or the science or technology behind it, but there is a, a process. Now, it's beyond me how that process works out every single time, but it does. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Where's the twelfth? Where's the twelfth one? There's always one that goes on holidays, isn't it? Always. Doesn't fail. Or have I got... No, there it is. It's hiding. It's hiding. It doesn't want to get touched up. There you go. <coughs> um, I think if I've got any sponge, spongy spongies left, I might, might use this. We'll see. Try not to make too much of a mess. Yeah, I think the French cleat system's lovely. I do too, John. I think it's great. Coming from Somerset cheddar cheese, for me, Black Bomber is one strong cheese mate. Oh, yeah, I love stuff like that. This is what gets me in Australia. You go to the, the mainline shopping centres or supermarkets, which in this case is Coles and Woolies, and they bring their own brand of cheese out. And they put a strength factor on it. And they, oh, you know, this is very strong. It's a five. Fair dinkum. It's eating like craft processed cheese. It doesn't have a bite at all. There's, uh, is it mid, mid, mainland? Mainland, I think, bring out, I forget what it's called. It starts with an E. Um, it's in its, oh, it's nice. It's very crumbly and strong. I do. My favourite used to be Cracker Barrel Red, which I think is a five. And then they bought a vintage out, which could be a six. But the vintage, yeah, just wasn't quite as nice. But, yeah, I like a bitey cheese. Well, it depends. Jarlsberg's nice because it's soft. It's got that real nutty flavour to it. Um, but sometimes, yeah, just a cheese with a nice bite is what you want. How do we get onto cheese? Now, I don't know what strength this is going to be because I'm actually going to rub it off. Yeah, that's not too bad. Did I knock the... I did, didn't I? That was yesterday. I just checking. I couldn't remember if I knocked the edges off or not. <sighs> I'm going to use all French cleats on my other cabinet in my workshop. Yeah, I look, um, a lot of stuff. In fact, in fact, as we speak, there's one... There's one up there behind that TV screen that used to hold my light box. And have we got any other ones around here? Mm, yeah, I would say that one there holding my moulding planes is on a cleat. Um, got nothing else there that I have. But up in the other, in the wood turning shed, I've got a couple of toolboxes and they're on cleats. So there we go. Where are we up to? I like a good blue vein too. I can't eat it in the house now. I'm going to do it this way, blow the brush. Can't eat it in the house because Sue reckons it stinks. But it's nice. I like it. Mm. 
Ba-dum, bum. Yeah, and that's true. You can rearrange it however you see fit. Well, I think it's good. Got a bit of tear out in there, but that's all right. We'll live with that. No, actually, I think I'll, I'll keep this a bit darker. I quite like that. That's quite nice and warm. All right, so we'll give this one a, give this one another coat as well. Now, when you're using a stain, you can't go shellac straight over the top because it will rip the stain out and looks horrible. So if you're going to stain something, um, put some at least raw linseed oil over the top. Then you can shellac and then the shellac will dry and you can pull out the oil through the shellac. And again, I don't understand the science. I just do it because I know it works because I... <laughs> I've done it wrong enough times. Uh, this colour I'm using is actually called dark oak, which is reminiscent of the old English oak furniture from the 1600s, I guess. I think we'll put that in the bin. Oh, I hope Susie hurries up. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll have to get down to Kenilworth. That, <laughs> I do, I like cheese. There used to be um, in Mullaney, there's a big wood show that goes on up there each year. And there's a cheese shop up there. And they let you sample it. Oh, they've got a Stilton up there to die for, but oh, you you want to drive home by yourself. <laughs> oh dear. The blue vein's good, Ray. Oh, makes all your fillings rattle. Yeah, good is nice. What was the one Theo likes? Um, hey, Theo, what was the cheese you like? It's a real soft one. I don't know. I'll, I'll ask him. It's annoying me now. Uh, where is he? There we go. We'll talk to the Mad Turner. He's he's another Greek, Paul. Name like Harold Lampo. He's not going to talk to me now. Okay. So he's talking to someone. I told you he wouldn't talk to me. He's talking to someone else now. I was just talking, just talking and waving across the road to the neighbour. Oh, the one that, that vacuums his lawn. That's it. You water your grass, no way vacuum it. It's, it's astroturf. Oh dear. Uh, Mate, quick question. We we are deep involved in the name of cheeses around here, and I was saying what I like, and then I said, Theo's got a. Oh, I've just worked it out. It's a Lumi, isn't it? Yeah, the it's, cheese. Yeah. yeah. Well, how do you say it? How do you say it? Oh, there you go. That's what it is. I'll, I'll stop wheeling the wheelie bin. Hang on. Halloumi, yeah. <laughs> um, I remember once a mate of mine uh, had a go at me because I said bazooki, which is the Greek instrument. Yeah. His mate, mate, he said, it's bazooki, not bazooki. <laughs> <laughs> I was saying it with an Australian accent. He was not impressed. Well, it's like, it's like the... Here's one for you to think about. It's like the word school. Do you know how many people spell it wrong? School. They get the O's mixed up. They always put the second O before the first one. Oh, yeah, I've 
I've seen that. Yeah, yeah, it's just annoying. I mean, you yeah, spend yeah. all this money on education and they don't get learned anything. <laughs> well, the, the most important thing is if you're drawing a zero, a no, I should say, you should draw, always draw it anti-clockwise. It's the most important thing. Anti-clockwise. Anti-clockwise, yeah. Yeah, and, go uh, on. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Hey, listen, I, ju I just finished. Um, I just fi finished setting up my cameras and my ATM Mini, and I'm going straight from. I'm going straight from the cameras to the ATM Mini, and then going straight out to Zoom. I've got a, I've got a chat room full of people, and they want to know when you're going to kick off. Yeah, well. Um, Mac, Max demo. Max Murray's just hanging in there. He wa <laughs> he wants to watch you. We might, we might Zoom it. I should just send an invite, uh, download all my Twitch uh, subscribers and send them all an email and an invitation to a Zoom session. There you go. That would be great because we'd be able to see each other live as well and if someone's talking, you can spotlight them and you can click a button and put your hand up if you like. Mate, and, I'm under uh, enough stress just doing it on YouTube, let alone all that other stuff. It's, it's easier because the, the participants don't have to type. Oh, they right. Can, all yeah, right. they can just talk on their mic. Well, man, but, but, you got... Yeah, but I'll, I'll give you a call because you want to chat, I can tell. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll give you a call. I'm going to round up. Susie's put... She's put a curfew on me. I can't stream past 12 o'clock. 12 o'clock. Yeah, well, she, mate, that, that, don't burn yourself out. What's what's it today before you go? 24, 25? Yeah, the now? 79th of October, I think. Ah. Uh, so, sure it's not a Sunday through the week. Yeah, okay, I'll let you go. Mate, Every day's a Sunday for me. I'll, I'll give you. I'll give you a call when I finish. Good on you. Cheers, mate. Bye. Yes, bye. <laughs> so there you go. Theo likes halloumi. Halloumi. Hello, wife. Hello, husband. How you going? Come here. Look at that. She's back. Can I? Can I check down? I'll give us the camera. We'll go. Oh, I still got a bandage on it. I know. He said just in case yes. it came open. <laughs> and it wasn't a skin tag. What was it? It was a mole. Yeah, I told and you it was, it was a benign. mole. So. But they give them names now. We could have called it. We could have taken it out for holidays. Hey, come on, benign. We're going for walkies. I said, yeah, I'm good at having benign things. Yeah, you know? thank goodness. Yeah, I know. <laughs> How's your doctor? Fine. Did you get a hug? No. You didn't get a cuddle. Oh, I wouldn't be paying his fee. Tell you what, it's so hard. They take your temperature before you walk through the door now. They've been in there. They take no. what? <laughs> they take your temperature before you walk into the doctor's surgery. Not the same way they take Bob's temperature. <laughs> I hope not. Well, I, <laughs> I hope not. I think you would have known. I, I, I would hope there. you would have known. I'll send you in there if that's the No, case. I'll die, thanks very much. I <laughs> Anyway, it was all good. It was all we and they use sanitizer as well before you go into the doctors, and again after. We're still on the thermometer thing because that's in, in my mind at the moment. No, I just oh, okay. Sanitizer. Can I can I can I share with you? Because this morning, do you know what my wife said? She said, "I'm Sorry. sick of losing all these black hairs." She said, look, all my black hairs are falling out. No, what you actually said was, I think I'm going grey. You're 66 years old, woman. You should be going grey. No, if I you're know, not, you're wearing a wig. I people younger than me that have gone grey already. Yeah, but they haven't lived with me. I, don't, oh, I saw that. There was a little, did you, did you get, I, just, I was looking at the screen. I know people go, oh. No, seriously, I know a lot of. Women. Did he give you a humour injection whilst you were there as well? No, no, it's actually. No, I was just starting to do this. That looks great. You like that? Yeah. Because it was against the stream. Because okay. they, all, they all like that. Oh, okay. And I said, yeah, but I have to live with Sue. So a hard ah, job in itself. Well, this is true. I'm thank you for you admitted it. She admitted it live. Trevor, Trevor, can you be witness to that? Hey, what was the other thing? We were talking about changing the cabinet too, weren't we? Yes. Might. Yeah, I'll look Borton. at that. Yeah, I don't know. Bill said. Mick Borton rang me up and he said, no, just whack it on the wall with a couple of two-inch nails and it won't fall down. 
Thanks, Mick. Yes, Mick. <laughs> All right. Hang on. We've got to get, because we're, we're, we're a great big discussion on cheese. Okay. I have no idea. Cheddar's the best. Oh, well, now, come on, where's someone said that? Who was that? Oh, goat's cheese. Oh, no. 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 Oh, vomit. Oh, no. Oh, dear. G'day, Earl, you snuck in. Oh, so envious, Ray. Just love a great strong blue cheese. Don't, yeah, I... <laughs> I'm not allowed it's either than that. Oh, it's good. Wolfie, g'day, mate. Welcome to the workshop. I've got to go, we're way behind now. I've got to, I'm only four minutes behind in the chat. That's, yes, Mulaney is good. It is. Uh, good mozzarella. Oh. I don't, they, well, they, their poles apart. Mozzarella, you could use as a squash ball, and parmesan you use as a cricket ball. I do. I love fresh parmesan, though, in block form. Oh, it breaks your teeth. Oh, it's nice. Camembert breeze, good smoky cheese. Yeah, that's not bad. I don't like smoking cheese, but smoky cheese. Actually, the cheese on Anthony's socks is pretty good, too. Probably. <laughs> is he out of bed yet? Good. Oh, right, here we go. We're getting sensible now. Hi, Sue. Can I ask for a costume? Custom saying Victor, not victim. Oh, we, we could have a look at something like that. Mm. That's what, that's what um, Tracy's got, isn't it? Victor. Didn't she get a tattoo saying, no, no, that was no longer a victim. That, oh, that yeah. was it. You don't have to write on yourselves for that. Morning, Mac Max says, good morning. Eric says, hi. Earl says, hello, Sue. Better safe than sorry, Sue. Yeah, um, absolutely. 40 minutes streaming left. Steve, assume your suit keeps you to a lot. Are you you're holding me to me 12 o'clock? My word. Look at that. Did you get that look? That's you don't argue with that. No, it's just so that was that was I had a conversation with somebody this morning and it says don't argue with a woman. Well they, that's true. It's like the Titanic. I mean, if the, they they'd listen to that the iceberg that said, Don't argue with that, they'd still be Plenty. going, wouldn't they? Yeah. yeah. And what do you know about women? Not much. Okay. Yeah, hey, whoa. Don't try to understand them. You haven't even got Prunella to back you up there. No, it's all right. I reckon Oscar Wilde had it. Yeah. He said, women aren't there to be, I'm going to get shot here. This is a quote, not my opinion. Women are not there to be understood and enjoyed. <gasps> oh. I exactly the same thing to somebody this morning. Did you? Yes. And there you go, Steve. There's a book. <laughs> There's a book on what do you know about women. It's empty. Yeah, but that, that doesn't mean to say you should underestimate them because they know heaps tricky, tricky, that's what I'm trying to say, tricky stuff. Are you with us, Louise? Are you there? <laughs> no, nah, it's all good. Oh, that means I can hug you now. Yeah. Well. Oh. oh, dear. Could I loan you a thermometer? <laughs> I use for horses. Oh, good on ya. Yeah, you want to warm it first. <laughs> <laughs> good morning, Sue from Louise. She's there. I saw nothing. Hello, Sue. Mike says, hi, Sue. Oh, we've done that one. Um, I was raised on goat's milk. Mm, I suppose if you'd never had anything else, you wouldn't know, but ew. how about I'm the boss? Whenever she says it, I can be. Yeah, what did we have? We had one when the, so uh, the kids got one in the house when they were young and it was... My dad, my dad's the boss of this house because my mum said he can be. <laughs> there you go. Now, understanding women is not a goal. Women understand women and they hate each other. Oh, Eric, you are so on the money. You sometimes, you say you're embarrassed to be a woman, don't you? Absolutely. The way some of them carry on. Not all of them. And I'm sure some men carry on disgracefully as well. Actually, funny story. Um, eldest son was living with a couple of other guys. Middle son went in and these other two boys were giving their girlfriends hard times and he said, don't argue with them because they're all just going to win. That's it. Even when you win, you lose. Isn't that right, Trevor? There you go. He's with us. I wrote the book on what I know about with two a page of plenty. <laughs> oh, mate, I wouldn't have made it so thick because the thicker the book is, <laughs> the more it's going to hurt when, <laughs> when she hits you with it. Anyway, have we got a saying today? Yeah. What have we got? 
I think it's <laughs> yeah, well, it's sort of, it's, in a way, it's a little bit hypocritical. Yeah. But in the other way, I think it's good because it means we can go places we haven't been before. And we won't show them there. <laughs> All right, here you go. Susie's suave, sophisticated, spiritual saying sewn segment. Give up while you're ahead. Well, that'd be stupid. If I gave up when I was ahead, I wouldn't have arms, I wouldn't have legs, I couldn't do woodwork. <laughs> I'd, be, I'd be a little talking head. Drill three holes in my head and use me as a bowling ball. <laughs> Are you crying again? Look, she's, no. She's no, given up on me. Up. Anyway, here's, here's the old Jesus quote for the day. Is that better? <laughs> you like that? It's what we were talking to cheese. I should have said that. You're my favourite old cheese. Here we go. <laughs> oh, I'm going to wear it when I stop scrolling. Five past 12 years <laughs> in trouble. <laughs> well, I'll have to go to the doctor and get me a thermometer, my me temperature taken. The oh. <laughs> oh, that's cruel. <laughs> Here we go. I want adventure in the great wide somewhere. Wild somewhere. Oh, great wide. Why? No, it's wide. No, it's wide. Oh. It's wide. Oh. You can spell check on your machine. Yeah, <laughs> no, no, that's good. I want adventure in the great wide somewhere. And that means you can go into your imagination. <sighs> that's where we all live. That's where I'd like to live. It's nice in there. Everything works out. Right. Nothing costs any money. Absolutely. And you can have fun. And you, you can have fun not getting in trouble. That's right. There you go. That's it. Uh, no, Master, she has lost the plot. Ah. Uh, we got that right. Hang on, hang on, hang on. We, well, there's a conspiracy happening in the chat room. Ah, oh, dear, oh dear. Uh, yeah. I like Mike. Fastest way to communicate, telephone, telegram, tell a woman. Oh, especially your... No, and that was your auntie, wasn't it? Auntie Mick. Yeah, yeah. She was Mrs. Waggling Tongue. Yep. All right. <laughs> Mrs. Waggling Tongue. My cousin Waggling christened tongue. Mrs. Waggling Tongue because it never... Oh, dear. Oh, I don't know about young love. But there's love in the shed. I'm not sure about young love. Louise agrees. <laughs> ben says, I just agree with anything my missus says. Mate, it's the safest way. It really is. You just... And then you get told you're not listening to me. Oh, yeah, well, we say yes. Okay, no. Why? What's wrong with that? Oh, actually, I've got a story about that. Like, this is the difference. This is the difference between men... And... Hey, careful. It's staying on. It's staying on. This is the difference, basically, between men and men. Your wife, partner significant other, whatever you want to call them, says, can you go down the butchers and get me a kilo of sausages? Not a drama, darling. Hop in the car, drive. You might go to Bunnings, fair enough. You might stop off and have something and get something else. But you end up at the butchers, you buy the sausages, you come back. That night you're sitting down enjoying a nice plate of sausages with mashed potato, fried onions, maybe a bit of tomato, a bit of English hot mustard. And your wife turns to you and goes, where'd you get these sausages from? You go, oh, I don't know, Jake's Butchery down the road, I think. And then you continue going, okay? Now, other scenario, you say to your wife, gee, darling, I'll tell you what, I wouldn't mind some sausages. So she obviously does not go anywhere, just goes straight down the butcher shop, buys the bangers, comes back, that night you're sitting down woofing in exactly the same meal. She's waiting for the punch, I can tell. Exactly the same meal. It's got mashed potato and onions and tomato. And you just look up and you're, mm, where'd you get these sausages? What does she say? Why? What's wrong with them? See? Straight away. Woof. Up you like a rat up a drain pipe. You just, it was an innocent question. So you just say, yes, dear. No, dear. No. <laughs> uh, no idea. <laughs> Oh dear, I just love you to bits. Oh dear, oh dear. Oh yeah, Louise is I'm all oh, she's lurking. I never argue with crazy people. <laughs> I ain't going there. Uh, oh, what what's that other one with crazy people? If you argue if you argue with a fool, there are two fools in the argument. There you go. <coughs> uh, Say, 
Alfredo's auntie told him that. So it must be true. Don't argue with people. Just mm. oh, and Lucas says hi. Might might not come back. <laughs> From imagine. Oh, okay. I was wondering. He went to say goodbye to your little one, and then might not come back. Now, imagination land. I could lose myself in there. Whew. Oh dear. Bum 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 bum. Uh, Ian says, hi, Mike. Sue, a question for you. Are women different today than when you were courting? Seems different expectations today. Am I way off? You are right on. They are chalk and cheese. Women back then were a lot better than what they are now because most of them are scatterbrains these days. <laughs> hey. She said that, not me. Okay, Absolutely. So. <clears throat> no, it's, it's... We were just talking about that, um, Sue and I, the other day. I won't go into the depth of the conversation. But, um, well, you thought I was dead set gay when we first went out. I met her on a blind date. Picture this, okay? I just had six weeks out in the bush in Western Australia on a, a manoeuvre. I came home, I'm walking down the back of this Hercules aircraft and one of the guys I shared a barrack room came and said, hey, you want to go on a blind date tomorrow night? I said, oh, yeah, why not? I've got nothing else to do. So met her that night. Yeah, and I fancied her girlfriend more than her, but my mate had his girlfriend and he didn't, <laughs> he didn't get anywhere with her either. And we went home and I drove you home, didn't I? You tell them. He drove me home, dropped me off, didn't even bother giving me a kiss and I was dead set concerned he was gay. And I went, that's it, nah, never to see him again. And then he asked me out on a second date. And I moved in the next day. You did. I did. I slept on the sofa, well, pretended to be slept on I the sofa. <laughs> pretend, no, I did sleep on the sofa. Yeah. It was a vinyl... Brown vinyl lounge. Green it was, vinyl, darling. It was as cold as a ice brick. Iceberg. Yeah, I can't say anything else. Yeah. Yeah. And then... <laughs> no, we won't go down that road. <laughs> but no, it was. We, we enjoyed. We used to go out. We actually courted. We did. Didn't we? went out before anything. Yeah. It took a couple of days before we even kissed you. Yeah. And we went... Where did we go? We went to pictures. And we went for walks and we went to the zoo. Yeah. There you go. Yep. Nowadays, how much money you got, where do you live and what sort of car do you drive? No, not interested. Yep. That's not all. I'm just saying there are some. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, no, women, women these days just seem to be scatterbrained. Yeah. Okay. G'day, where's his hands with you? Sorry, you gotta speak up yeah, because right. I'm yeah. here. Yeah. Is Ange with you? Hi. Just on your way home. What are you listening to me? Or you hope you're not watching me while you're driving, mate. Apparently, uh oh dear, oh dear. Maybe Ange is driving. Could be, well. could be. Max is never a true word said, Mrs. A, regarding some modern women today. There it goes. What's with that? My wife thought I was gay when I first met because unlike other guys around her, I just kind of ignored her. Well, I, I didn't sort of ignore Sue. I was petrified of her, but I didn't ignore her. And the fact I lived next door to my mother didn't help. Oh, yeah. Jeez, when her mother came in, oh, that was a whole different. Cold as, that will do. That will do. But Trevor, I've never experienced one of them, nor do I want to, especially now because she's ashes. <laughs> like kissing a barbecue in the backyard. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, you see? Sue, Sue picked that. She said, oh, she might be driving. There you go. Women care more about how they look on social media than how nice they are. As well, there you go. that's true. Oh, there are some funny ones around. Like this isn't a beat up on women. I love women. A woman. Woman. Um... And I wish I had a daughter too. She must like wouldn't. Maybe. She wouldn't like me as a, a father. I don't think. I got a granddaughter. G'day, Raven, darling. How are you? If you're watching, um, what was I going to say? Oh yeah, it was. Oh, what's 
What's up, ladies? Haven't seen many selfies. Can't you get your Botox done? <laughs> Shocking. Oh, that's me. Thing going off. So, anyway, enough of that. I got to. <laughs> oh dear, well I haven't hit rock bottom yet. Good thing about hitting rock bottom, you bounce There's up. There's only one way to go from there. G'day, Rob! Rob, 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 now. Something I was going to say, remind me. Oh. You sent oh, me. Where do you get to get a tour of my sewing room when I clean it up? <laughs> you reckon she needs a, uh, uh, whatever it is? Clean up. Broom, broom. No, actually, I swept it out the other day, <coughs> but it doesn't mean to say it's any better. So we'll, we'll get some pictures up there. Yeah. But listen, if you're putting a curfew on me, I've got things on the yeah, I can't right. sit here dribbling with you all day. I can do that in the house. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Catch you tomorrow. Yep. Yeah. Mm. So that feels better? Yeah. Yeah, and everything's good. Yeah. Yeah, it was too big for a tag. Yeah. I reckon. Yeah. And I'm not even a doctor. But anyway, that's the way it goes. Yeah, Rob, you sent me an email the other day and I answered it and I was going to do something. Can you can you refresh my memory because I've lost it. All right, I'll give you the five past because. Oh look at that! She's starting. To, she's caving no, in. Don't. I Just for a I got an extra five minutes, so I can I got to finish at twelve, but I can round off. Yeah. All right. Well, she's a good woman that one. I think I'll keep her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we weren't meant to hear that. Did you hear that response? Oh, you better. Goodness gracious. Oh, I said, G'day, Rob. Yeah, it was something I was going to say to you, but I've, I've really forgotten. I've forgotten. It'll come to me. And when it does, I'll do it. Uh. Mm -hmm. Oh, g'day, Pascal. Lovely for you to drop in. Good morning. Randy! News on my phone just now. A man checked his bank account to see if his stimulus check was in. It did. Count showed $8.2 million. Well, I'd get very stimulated over that. Absolutely. Uh. Okay, well, say good day to your eyelids. We'll catch you later, Alfredo. Thanks for dropping in, mate. Yeah, it was... Oh, I think I've already done that. That's right. You did the drawings and I showed, you, showed them your drawings, which were absolutely... I'll show you. This is my favourite one, if I can find it again that Rob did. It is just absolutely, uh, where are we? <whistles> Trouble. <laughs> I most likely won't be able to find it because I literally get that many emails. Uh, bum, 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 bum. No, I think it's too far down the list, Rob. So I'm sorry, but Rob does these most amazing drawings and apologise because he's only a beginner. He's only been doing it for four years. Mate, if I was that good after 30 years, I would be happy. You're an absolute, a gifted person. And thanks for coming back in. Uh, Max. You and your wife have just bought some very special memories from my court. Oh, isn't that lovely? Thanks, Max. Yeah, she's off. She's gone. Yeah, Steve's always in trouble. Don't worry about soon. All right, I've got to get back to staining these. Well, I've lost me a bit of rag now. Oh, she just comes in and throws me in the, throws me curveballs all the time. I was looking in the backyard too. I think I might have to. Crank the old mower up and get in there and give the lawn a bit of a haircut. Although we haven't had much rain. So I actually I was a bit annoyed because the last time I um, mowed, I set the grass height a quarter of an inch lower than I normally have it. And I thought, oh, doesn't matter. Next time I'll adjust it. And we haven't had any rain since. So it's all the weeds are coming through, which are not, not a good thing. <clears throat> I, 
I don't, I don't think anyone could get in the bigger trouble, even if they had a backhoe, let alone a bigger shovel. <laughs> <coughs> <laughs> yeah. That's right, already in trouble. I wake up, I'm in trouble. And I don't wake up, I'm in bigger trouble. I'll tell you what I did. I watched a, a movie yesterday on um, Netflix with Liam Nielsen in it called Unknown. Oh, if you like suspense type of movies... It is an absolute ripper. Thoroughly enjoyed it. And the one I've earmarked for today is a sequel called uh, You Can't See Me 2. With, um, I think it's Morgan Freeman's in it. It's a follow-up of the first one, which was you can't see me or now you can't see me or something or other. So I'm, I'm looking forward to <coughs> vegging out with a cheese sandwich when I finish here and going up and, and watching that. Oh, Bob hasn't moved. He, he's still fast asleep. He just loves that bed. That's it. Perhaps I should resurrect. He did have a shed bed, but he wouldn't use it. <coughs> oh, speaking of cheeses, stinking! I tell you what, this stain's pretty, pretty strong as well. Just quietly. <coughs> now you see me, that's it, now you see me. Sorry, that was it. That's the one, right? Then we watched a great kids one last night called The Main Event, which is about a, a young boy who was very shy and timid and he found this wrestler's mask that gave him special powers. I like ones you don't have to think about sometimes, especially before I go to bed. I hate, hate the ones that get your mind thinking and then your mind's too busy when you try and sleep, which is not a good thing. That one's good, that one's good, that one's good. They're all good? Good. Oh! Master, how come the boys don't mow the lawns? Uh, it's called a $6,500 lawnmower. And I enjoy doing it. Need I say more? Now, I love mowing the lawn, Max. I've got anywhere from an hour and ten minutes to an hour and a half of just sitting there letting my mind wander. And also I get to know my yard, which is nice, and I, I look at all the trees that are growing that have come um, up from, you know, saplings from other parent trees around the place and check on the passion fruit vine. That's about the only thing that grows. And just enjoy the solitude of actually being productive but not have to do anything. You just, I just sit on the mower and it's effortless, loose, effortlessness. There you go. Um, it's a, a hustler, zero turn mower, and it is just so nice. So it's got laterals like an APC armoured personnel carrier. It doesn't have a steering wheel, it's just sort of these laterals. You sit there and you just, that's how you steer it, just by like that. It all works on hydraulics. So that's why. <coughs> I'd like to get a bit of rain Saturday. Oh, this coming Saturday, that'll be nice. Uh, see you, George. Yeah, you're welcome, Rob. I mean, I'm not blowing smoke. I'm, you really are a very talented person. 20 minutes left. Ah, I'm on the countdown. 
Oh, don't forget she's giving me five. I think Lou kept you for 20. <laughs> she could have too. She could have. I was going to go in to the doctors with her, but um, it's it's quite quite a challenge if Sue and I go out anywhere together um, because there are certain things that have to be done and therefore it's a lot easier if we can, we go on separate trips. But she was good and she made it back and got a saying to boot. I still reckon that one of the other day was good don't be afraid of failing, be afraid of not trying. Yeah, that's starting to make sense to me now. So if you're afraid of not trying, that means you're going to try because you're afraid of not trying. It took, took a few days, you know, to get in through the cranium to work that one out. I think, yeah, unfortunately, Daniel uh, Radcliffe, he, he got typecast as Harry Potter and he grew up. Um, and a lot of people don't like it when people grow up, but they do. Yeah, it's funny, I uh, not so much now I've got Amazon Music, but before I just play DVDs in the shed, uh, old... Simon and Garfunkel, one's a uh, concert they did in, um, what's that park? Central Park in New York and um, John Fogarty stuff, you know, Cretans Clearwater. And then you see them nowadays on the latest YouTube or Facebook and you're, holy doolies, I, I was only watching them half an hour ago. Gee, they've got old since then. But it's true. We all get old, and that's a plus. Uh, oh. oh, there's a third one coming out too. Interesting. What's that? Oh, no, that was right. We watched the Airbender the other night, and it got a Raspberry Award. Great movie, I thought. I loved it. Have you noticed these people that knock stuff? They... They never do anything themselves, but they just knock other people. It's just very petty, I think. I'm the boss of my house and I have permission to say, that's it, Devin. You just hold your ground and make sure you don't overstep any boundaries. You'll be right. Yep. I can't, I can't, where is he? I'm going to just, this is just amazing. How many times have you seen that? He's just so happy there. Normally he's in and out, in and out, in and out. Oh, that's it. Whoops, we'll go there. He's just happy lying there. <clears throat> Haven't watched that one, Eric. Oh, yeah. Can't get into those, though. They just seemed, I don't know, it was... <laughs> this, this is a guy coming from a guy that likes watching Stargate. But they're just too far-fetched. It's just, no. Oh, I like Nicolas Cage. Randall, good morning, mate. How are you? Are you at work or are you on a day off? Or are you just, you're just sneaking something in on your break?
Yeah, oh, great mower, Trevor. Honestly, is. <laughs> oh, I don't know. We'll see how we go. Yeah, I've got, got that extra five minutes. Don't forget that. That's important. Five minutes. Yeah, no, she's she's a clever girl, that one. Thanks, Rob, I'll tell her. <clears throat> yeah, I love I love going shopping with Susie when I can because <laughs> she's got more money than me. <laughs> Especially around cake shops. And that that's a bad thing, a new cake shop, as I've said, just opened up the road. And it's only 600 metres up the road. Oh, they got lovely cakes. And you can spend 20 bucks there without batting an eyelid. I wanted to get on with that chair repair today too. That that might have to that could be a later on job as well. <clears throat> oh Avatar was good too. Yeah, actually I find in a, a lot of cases, if a movie gets rave reviews and wins all these Oscars, to my tastes. They're not brilliant movies. It's all the hype. I mean, look, I enjoyed Titanic. Uh, but when you actually look at it, it, if it wasn't on board the Titanic, it really, it would have been almost a B-grade movie. That uh, Kate Winslet's lovely. Yeah, we covered some topics today, and we've been reasonably well behaved considering her Royal Highness isn't in. <clears throat> I'll expect a note from her tomorrow, though. Yeah, look, James, honestly, and again, it's just my personal opinion, but the sheer uh, naming of a critic, that's not healthy. It's not. Oh, I'm a critic. You know, they're food critics. Oh, it's not right. Yeah, well, that's your taste buds, mate. It's not mine. Art critic. Oh, no, that's rubbish. No, it's not. That's really good. No, there's not many critics that actually create. You know, everyone can criticise and tell you better ways or faster ways or how... Have you, and I know I've said this before on stream, but it's so true. How often have you had this brilliant idea, oh, I'm going to make... I don't know. I'm going to make a, a goose's salad bowl. Whatever that is, I don't know. I just made it up. <clears throat> oh, I'm going to make a goose's salad bowl. Oh, and I'm going to do this. And then whoever you tell them, oh, what, you, you could do it this way. You, they didn't even know it existed before you filled their mind with it. And all of a sudden, they're telling you how they could do it better. And they've done nothing themselves. And Bob's out because I'm having a rant. But no, you are a good boy. Yeah, all right, I'll let you out. Or oh, perhaps, perhaps he's scared of mum too. Yeah, people, are, as soon as you start doing something, oh, I wouldn't do it that way. Well, you go and make one. Oh, I don't want to make one. Well, don't tell me how to make mine then. Oh, get some my wick. No, I'm good, I'm good. I've got some time left. Uh, Avatar is a great movie. My daughter is... This is Brian. 
My daughter is the head chef, so I will give you two guesses as to what is on TV most of the time. <laughs> oh, well, that's another show. I mean, MasterChef has just been revamped, apparently. When it first started, 10 years ago or whenever it was, I didn't mind watching it, but then, oh, it's just rubbish. It really is. You've got these people that are really trying the hardest, and then as it progressed, you can tell it's scripted. And it's so... Oh, I'm going to drop this egg. Oh, hang on, let me set the camera up. And then, boom, they drop the egg and they zoom in. and It's just, oh, no, I like stuff. This stuff's real. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not. But that's, that's just how it is. I'm just going to go and spread these out over there. How, oh, yeah, I've got a bit of time. And I'll be back, Jack. There was a, a show, I believe, it either went to air in America or England. I'm not sure which, but it was along the same lines as MasterChef Australia. And it was furniture makers. And you had these people in there. One was an interior designer and someone else was such and else. And these people, you know, they'd be given a, a horseshoe, a bag of bent screws and uh, two metres of fibreglass. And then they had to make something out of that. And it was brought to my attention through a third person and I thought, what a lot of rubbish. You know, these people that are making the decisions, why don't they make something? Let's see you make something in real time, not after the cameras have done it and you've wrecked it four or five times. Because I really believe, unless you're a bit of a sociopath, if you are a, a craftsman or someone that does something, I don't care if it's cooking or woodwork or art or sewing or whatever, but if you actually do something, you know how much effort goes into it and you're going to be a pretty weak character to belittle someone else's efforts just to get ratings. You know, you can put your heart and soul into something and someone goes, oh, no, that's, that's terrible. It's just soul-destroying. So... I I, I had fantasies if they were going to bring the show to Australia. It'd be interesting if they asked me to be a judge because I'd tell them to shove it. I've only ever judged one competition and uh, the guy that won it, yep, he really deserved to win it. But at what expense? Um, you don't know what difficulties people overcome to achieve the final result. You might have someone that's uh, born with something that prevents them from doing things accurately or they could have had uh, acquired brain injury and therefore they find it very challenging to try and hit a nail straight and they make a, a little box and it's a very simple box. And you go, oh, that's rubbish. You know, so-and-so could have done that with their eyes closed. But for the person that made it, it could have taken them three months. I've got a, a friend and uh, his daughter, very sadly, uh, was in a very bad accident and she's now a quadriplegic and she does the most amazing art, absolutely amazing art. And yet my friend tells me it takes her 20 minutes, anywhere from 20 to 40 minutes, to get the pencil into a position that she can use it. And you get these other people running around going, oh, no, I could do better than that. Oh, no, look, she's too heavy with the lines there or that didn't work. And She's entered the Sydney to Marathon, not Sydney to Marathon, what, what's it called? City to Surf race. And she's had people volunteer to push her wheelchair and she has actually got rid of them because they can't cope pushing the wheelchair that distance. So she, somehow or other, I don't know how she uses it, I think she might be using her, um, her head 
to operate a joystick on a wheelchair, she will finish it by herself. And she won't even come in dead last. I mean, there's guts and determination. Why don't we start acknowledging that? Why don't we start out giving bouquet for people that are actually doing stuff that's above what people expect of them through sheer guts and determination? You know, so much is, oh, no, that's not pretty enough. Well, you're too short, you're too tall, you're too slow. I don't like that. That's out of fashion. Oh, no, that's so 1980s. Can't we blow critics up? That's it. We're, all, we're going to have a mass movement of blowing critics up. There you go. I managed. Look at that. And they reckon men can't do two things at once. I just stayed the inside of that cabinet and had an old man rant at the same time. So <laughs> things are looking up. And I'm within my time limit too. Oh. You know, I've said a bit of my personal stuff because we, we get to know each other quite well. My dad, <clears throat> bless his heart, he, uh, at 12 years old, he lost an arm. <clears throat> and in those days, if there was anything wrong with you, <clears throat> like that, they'd literally put you in a sheltered work workshop and you'd have to weave baskets. The other thing was, it was... Uh, towards the end of World War II and so he couldn't get a job because anyone that came back that was an amputee or um, disabled in any way was given preference over, you know, somebody that hadn't been a veteran. And that's why he took up writing and he became very successful as a, a playwright and a novelist and, um, yeah, radio plays, TV plays, large movies, what have you. And then a little bit later on in life, he got involved in a few other things and uh, down the track, he, he was pretty well off and in a good position financially. And the number of people he used to say, oh, you're so lucky. Oh, I wish I'd had your life. Oh, you know, oh, I've just done it hard my entire life. Yeah, they just forget obstacles that they overcome. Dad used to renovate houses with one arm. And he'd be up a ladder, painting a ceiling with one arm. All stuff like this. And yet people say, oh, you're lucky. No, it's got nothing. To, what is the, the old thing? The harder I work, the luckier I get. Hey, I look, I'm going to calm down because I'm fired up. I'm ready to take on the world. Let me at him. Oh, so where are we up to? Ah, oh, dear. G'day, Panda. Um, my phone is dying, vile. See, Eric, catch you tomorrow, mate. Six minutes left. Ah, ah, ah. Randy, off. See you, Randy. You're gone. <laughs> I see, you, Rob. I, I really appreciate that comment. You had no idea. Off air. I do have a little bit of a rant about that. You've got all these people and they're, oh, I'm not worthy. I'm not saying I'm good by any means, but there aren't that many that would actually take on what I'm doing. And if you ask me something, I'll have a crack of it. I can't guarantee it'll succeed, but I'll have a go. And that's what it is. It's just having a go out there. Anyway, where are we at? I'm going to wrap this up or the old girl will be down here. Shoot up me like a rat up a drain pipe. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, I had a survey the other day ask me about how I feel about what others think about how I look. Oh, there's another, there's another great one we used to use in self-esteem courses and what have you. It's what other people think of you is absolutely none of your business. But oh no, she thinks that I'm such a don't forget it. Go, be about your business. Only hang around people. There's a um, thing with Dick Van Dyke the other day and he said he'd just married a, another lady um, and they were making this big thing. Oh, she's younger than him. And he's 90. Everyone's younger than him. And they said, you know, how do you maintain your uh, zest for life? He said, surround your, 
you, you surround yourself with young people, people that are exciting, people that are doing things, people that know how to laugh. Couldn't agree more. You hang around a bunch of deadheads, next thing you know, one or two things is going to happen. You're going to leave or you're going to become a deadhead. Mm. <laughs> no way in the world, Max. I get, a, I get stressed out enough coming down here, let alone putting up with flipping journalists. Yeah, in fact, you couldn't quote me. If I was Prime Minister, you would not be allowed to quote me because there'd be nothing I'd say that'd be printable. <laughs> That's, thanks, Louise. Oh, they're good for me. They're good for the blood pressure. Uh, oh, I like that one, Rob. Luck, labour under cor correct knowledge. Mm. <laughs> Thanks, James. I think I might need it. Uh, Murray, good day, mate. How you going? I hope all is well. So now we've got new, I've got a problem here because I've got new people popping in the chat room and I'm under a curfew and she'll be down here. Oh dear, I, oh that's it. I'm, a, I, I'm just look, I'm looking at the clock up there. No, look, be, bear with me. Back me up. <laughs> All right, look at that. See, that says 12.04. And I just looked at my computer screen and it says 12.06. So I'm a minute over, I'm going to get shot. Anyway, we did get some stuff done. We'll do some more tomorrow. Under, under um, the new government regulations of she who must be obeyed, I have been given a 12 o'clock curfew with five minutes for a wrap-up. So I better wrap up. So this is Steve saying, no, I'm not. I'm going to pull the shed door down first. Steve pull the shed door down and say, remember... Keep it sharp, but more importantly, keep it safe. Look after yourself. Be kind to each other. Be tolerant of others and be kind to them too. In all honesty, thanks for everybody in the workshop. We did get some stuff done. I appreciate your patronage and support. I think it's a lot of fun. And I'm getting work done down here that possibly wouldn't get done anyway. But I better respect my dearly beloved wishes if I want to live and stream tomorrow. So until tomorrow, when I'm looking forward to having your company in the workshop, at the workbench, at the same time where we do it all again, only differently, I bid you good night, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, and God bless. Stay safe. Thanks for everything. Bye for now. <laughs>